Battlefield 5 has definitely had its struggles with feeling like an authentic World War II video game. But with the introduction of the Pacific chapter, I have to say there have been plenty of steps made to make sure there are proper options here that players who like authenticity, they can use those options this time around. Today we're going to be using an authentic American rifleman loadout in Battlefield 5, one that any one of the game can build provided you've been playing Battlefield 5 for the last few months, and we're going to see if it's actually any good. But before we get into that, a word from our sponsor today. If you're looking to set up your streaming game or you want to record your gaming moments and share them with your friends, then Elgato has got you covered with their industry-leading products. For more information on any of those, click the link at the top of the description and you can learn more. Okay then, so starting things off, we've got to make sure that our soldier is dressed appropriately. Battlefield 5 doesn't have as many clothing options for the Americans as the British or the German factions yet, but more outfits are making their way into the game and many of them can be obtained without having to spend real money. You can use company coin or you're going to be unlocking them through the Tides of War. Now, luckily, the outfits that are best suited for this authentic loadout are both already available to you if you took part in the previous chapter of Battlefield 5, Defying the Odds, and you managed to unlock them via the chapter rewards page. Both the GI and the Yankee outfits are the best ones that you can go for, and of the two of them, I prefer the Yankee outfit. It's got a little bit more flair than the GI outfit, but it follows the same exact base look, so you're still getting that authentic feeling. There's no face paint applied here. I'm going in fresh to the map off of the Higgins boat. With the cosmetics out of the way, we need to turn our attention to our soldier's weapon loadout. And of course, a true American rifleman would not be complete without that iconic M1 Garand, which for the purposes of this video, I have removed all of my expensive Boynes only camos from. So we've got this factory new looking weapon fitted with a grenade launcher attachment, and that gives me a little bit more versatility in combat. Now, I've neglected to apply the heavy load specialization in Battlefield 5. That gives you more damage at range. I'm just sticking with the base damage model here, the original 30 6 Springfield round. Basically, this M1 is as close as I can make it to what the real thing would have been like in World War II. Approximately 5.4 million M1 Garands were made during the World War II period, and they weren't issued only to American troops, but other allied forces as well. Moving from primary to secondary, of course here, we've gone with the iconic M1911, two iconic weapons side by side. But we're not going for the flashy silver plated one that people ask me about every single video that it shows up in. No, we're going to go for the basic M1911 here. If we're pushing for authenticity, then we best make sure we're doing that in every place possible. The M1911 is arguably the most well-known pistol ever produced, and during World War II, nearly 2 million units of it were produced. So many, in fact, that after the war finished, the American government cancelled all production contracts, and instead, they just chose to refurb all of the existing units. When it comes to melee weapons, you do kind of have a choice here of two that you can use in this authentic loadout. You can go for the rusty looking EGW survival knife, or you can opt for the much cleaner and sharper K-Bar knife if you've unlocked it via the Chapter 5 Chapter Rewards page. Now, of course, neither of these things will change how effective you can be when using your melee weapon, but it just sort of depends on what sort of look you want to go for. I've gone for the K-Bar knife since it was the knife given to soldiers in the US Army, and it was also adopted by the Marine Corps in 1942. And for gadgets, unfortunately, at the moment, we are lacking the American bazooka launcher because DICE made a boo-boo and for some reason created it only for the 5v5 game mode in mind rather than their massive Pacific chapter, for whatever reason. So really, I'll try and steer clear of using any launchers in the footage that you're watching in this video and instead, I'll just be using the dynamite. So that's our authentic American rifleman loadout. What's it actually like to use in Battlefield 5 in-game? 
Well, as you'd expect, it is quite a lot of fun. If you've used the Garand much already, then you are going to be familiar with how effective it can be at mid to long range combat, but it suffers a little bit when you look at the ammo count. Just eight rounds per clip before you have to reload. That does realistically mean that you're only going to be able to kill one, maybe two enemies before you have to take cover and reload. But of course, you do get that lovely reload ping every time you do it if you've run out of ammunition in the clip. So a nice little trade off there. Personally, I've been using the heavy load setup since the launch of the Pacific, and that ups the damage at range for the M1 Garand. It allows you to get some three shot kills instead of four shot kills. So stepping backwards away from the heavy load, that has been a bit of an adjustment for me. And also with the heavy load, I've been relying on my three times scope. Combining those two turns your Garand from a standard semi-auto rifle into something of a marksman rifle for the assault class. I actually did a video about the heavy load M1 Garand right after the Pacific launched. So dropping back to iron sights without heavy load and not being able to combat enemies at longer ranges as effectively, that is something I've also had to get used to. You do get increased rate of fire by not applying heavy load, however, and that helps you in the mid range. And if you get jumped on at close range, you at least stand a chance of getting some shots off. But really up close, what you want to be relying on is your secondary, your M1911 pistol. At close range, and that's pretty much a distance that you can smell your opponent's breath, the M1911 can three shot kill players, but I think that only goes out to about 12 meters. At 30 meters, the damage drops off to a five shot kill, and that provides that you can be accurate. So there is some quite severe damage drop off with the M1911. But I'd say anything inside 10 to 15 meters, the M1911 is a better alternative to firing off shots from your M1 Garand. That is very much likely to be beaten by players who are running SMGs or the support class running shotguns. Now, you might get lucky with your M1 Garand. You might catch an enemy off guard or they don't return fire in time or you just get really lucky with the hip fire. But the M1911 will be able to drop players very quickly if you find yourself in a place that the M1 Garand doesn't really suit. So places like the trenches on Iwo Jima or in and around the bunkers or if you're in the caves. In those places, a long rifle isn't really the best option. And with only eight rounds in a clip before you have to reload and the reload not really being the fastest in the world, a weapon like the 1911 that can get you out of a jam fairly easily. At those close ranges, you're really operating around 15 to 20 meters, and the 1911 can hold its own in that regard. And interestingly, looking at a very small part of our loadout here, but I still think this is quite interesting, I learned the other day that there is a very subtle difference between the frag grenade that the US, UK, and Japanese soldiers can equip and the German stick grenade, even though they fill the same role. The frag grenade, that has an ever so slightly shorter throwing time and the stick grenade has a slightly wider shockwave damage radius. Now in practice, these differences are so small that you're never ever going to notice them, but knowing they are different gives me a reason to tell you that as an American soldier, you can throw a grenade 15 milliseconds faster than you can as a German soldier. But right now, of course, that means absolutely nothing because the Americans and the Germans, they're not pitted against one another in any of the Battlefield 5 maps. But it could become more prevalent as time goes on for the game. Maybe we'll see German-American battles later on in 2020 as we move on from the Pacific Theater. Who knows? Overall then, trying to play as an American rifleman in Battlefield 5 it's really not that difficult and of the authentic roles that you can actually build it's probably one of the ones that dice made sure you could build the game does prioritize gameplay over authenticity at pretty much all stages by giving you the option to negate all of the authentic stuff that some people really wanted to see in battlefield 5 you can run around in more vibrant clothing options you can run around with any weapon you like as opposed to faction locked weapons but if you do want to limit yourself to being an American rifleman or you just want to take on some different iconic roles from World War II, then I've got a feeling you're going to have a good time and there are plenty of options there that, that you can use. We've waited a long time for the iconic M1 Garand rifle to enter the game. We've waited a long time for the American forces to enter the game. So 
now we can play out the role that many American soldiers would have taken on during World War II. Thanks very much for watching today. I do have a few more of these authentic loadout videos planned, so I will be back soon with another episode. But in the meantime, if you've got any suggestions for different loadouts that you want me to do, whether they're authentic or they follow something different in your mind, then drop them in the comments down below. Make sure you list the clothing for the soldiers as well as a loadout for the weapons so that I can get everything into the video and I can properly try the loadout. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. That lets me know that I can carry on doing these videos and there is an audience out there who wants to watch them. And of course, if you didn't like it, the dislike button is there too. But until next time, my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.